In this segment, we're going to talk about the Rankine cycle with regeneration with open feed water heaters. So how can we increase the thermal efficiency of our Rankine cycle? Uh, we did mention that we can increase the work output of our turbines used in reheating. And in this segment, we're going to talk about regeneration, which allows us to decrease the required amount of heat that we have to put into our cycle. And we can do that two ways, with open feed waters, feed water heaters, and closed feed water heaters. And this segment will be on open feed water heaters. So let's look at the cycle. From state one to state two, you've got an ideally isentropic compression process. Then you've got a constant pressure heat addition process. And then you expand in a two-stage turbine. So the first turbine is the high pressure turbine. The second stage is the low pressure turbine. Part of the steam is extracted at state four. And we'll talk about what that Y term means in just a second. So part of it's bled off at state four. The rest of it is allowed to pass on to the low pressure tur turbine and then completely fully expand to state five, where it passes through a condenser. So that's a constant pressure heat rejection process. Then it undergoes an ideally isentropic compression process to pump it up to the same pressure as state one. So this is this open feed water heater. It's a direct contact heat exchanger because the cooled off fluid at state seven mixes together with that still very high temperature fluid at state four. And so what comes out at state one is at some temperature in the middle. Essentially, this extracted steam preheats the, all the rest of the flow that was allowed to fully expand in that second stage, that second expansion stage within the turbine. Um, the effects of regeneration, well, it decreases the amount of heat that we have to put into the cycle because we've preheated it. We've, we've increased the temperature a little bit more than it would have been coming in at state two. Um, and so we don't have to add as much energy to get it up to the temperature at state three. Um, it does have the effect of decreasing the work output of those turbines because you're bleeding off some of that steam early in the expansion, in the expansion process. And so the energy that would have been available that are, that's extracted is no longer used to produce work. But the overall effect should be to increase the thermal efficiency. Um, and it'll be your, your job as a design engineer to you know, figure out what that balance is. All right, so let's handle those Ys. So the Y indicates uh, to you the fraction of steam that's bled off. So Y is equal to M.4, the mass flow rate at state four, divided by the mass flow rate at state three. So let's see where our mass flow rates are constant, or, or, or not constant, but equal to one another. Because unlike every single other cycle that we've looked at so far, um, all the Brayton cycle and Brayton cycle with regeneration, reheat, intercooling, Rankine cycle, Rankine cycle with reheat, all of those have just been one big loop. But here we've it's not one big single loop. You're bleeding off steam, you're bleeding off steam, so the the the, the flow splits. So let's look at where those mass flow rates are equal. M.1, M.2, M.3, those are all equal to one another. That's all the flow joined together. And I'm just gonna call that M. Dot since it's all the flow joined together. All right, so let's see. One minus Y is the fraction of steam that's allowed to fully expand in that low pressure turbine. So this is M.5 divided by M.3, or you could put that M.3 in terms of just M. Dot if you wanted to. So let's look at where the mass flow, res or flow rates are constant for, or um, the same on the other stream. So M.5, M.6, and M.7 are all equal to one another. And then M.4 is just kind of off by its lonesome self. Um, I have drawn all these um, these little these little dotted lines on our diagram here to indicate to you that it's not the full flow. It's not all of the flow and we've kind of divided things up. But typically you'll just see these drawn as, as, as straight lines. And so going forward, that's the way I'm going to do it. Not as a dotted or dashed line, just as a solid line. All right, so how do we find why? Well, you analyze that open feed water heater. So here's my open feed water heater and I'm gonna apply an energy balance. I'm gonna assume everything's operating at steady state. This is a direct contact heat exchanger. And so the only heat that you want exchanged is between the stream at four and seven. And so this whole unit is going to be insulated. So Q dots equal to zero, 
there's no work, there's no changes in kinetic and potential energy, and so all you're going to have is the sum of the m dot h's coming in equals the sum of the n dot h's going out. All right, so we've got stuff coming in at 4 and 7, stuff leaving at 1, and then I could divide through by the mass flow rate, m dot, which is the total mass flow rate. So remember, m dot is equal to m dot 1, 2, and 3. So if I divided through that, and then I looked at my definitions for y and 1 minus y, I would get this guy right here. So m dot 4 divided by m dot is just y. m dot 7 divided by m dot is 1 minus y. m dot 1 divided by m dot is just 1. So I can algebraically solve for y, and if I know all those enthalpies, I've got, I've got an answer there. Um, do be careful about trying to apply the energy balance to the turbines or the compressor, or not the compressor, but the condenser. Um, so one thing that I do see people doing is maybe applying the energy balance to the turbine and trying to solve for y, but then they just say, okay, well, it's the sum of the m dot h is coming in equals the sum of the m dot h is going out, and they completely ignore the w dot out term. So analyzing that open feed water heater allows you to eliminate everything except the m dots and the h's, and that's just really convenient. Um, just a word of caution about analyzing that two-stage turbine. I think the easiest way and the way that you're probably not going to mess up is just by drawing your control volume around the entire unit, so encompassing the low pressure and the high pressure turbine together. Um, so if you do this, you apply your energy balance, you should get a W dot equals the sum of the M dot H's. Oh, and that should be a minus, I'm sorry. The sum of the M dot H's coming in minus the sum of the M dot H's going out. Um, so you've got stuff coming in at three and stuff going out at four and five. And then if I divided through by M dot and I use my, my, um, <clears throat> my, um, Definitions for y and 1 minus y, I can get um, little w or little w out for the turbine um, in terms of just h's and y's and 1 minus y's. <clears throat> I can also, if I wanted to, I could analyze each of those stages individually. So I could analyze the high pressure turbine and the low pressure turbine separately. And then I just I could just you know add the work for one plus the work for the other, and then I get the work output for the entire turbine. And what I should get is the same thing that I just that I just calculated um, up on the top there. So let's do that. So if I analyze the first the high pressure turbine, all right, <clears throat> same thing. Sorry about that. It's an equal sign. But W dot out for the first expansion stage is equal to the sum of the m dots coming in minus, not equal, minus the sum of the m dots, m dot h's coming out. And so what that's going to give me, well, let's see, I've got stuff coming in at three, stuff leaving at four, that seems really simple, but I need to not forget about that fluid that is allowed to continue to expand. So some of it is bled out at state, uh, some of it is bled out, um, to go to that open feed water heater and some of it is allowed to expand to fully expand and it goes into that low pressure turbine the one that's marked with a number the roman number numeral number two and so whatever it's whatever is going in to that low pressure turbine it's going in at state four so the temperature at state four the pressure at state four but the fraction of steam it's not y it's one minus y so <clears throat> if I did that, so I'm still looking at that first high pressure turbine, I've got one inlet and I've got two outlets. They're both have an enthalpy of H4, but I need to just be careful. One is going out, it's got a mass, frac um, the, mass the uh, fraction of mass flow rates is Y at the bottom, and then going on to that low pressure turbine, it's one minus Y, so just need to be careful about that. And then if I look at my second low pressure turbine, same thing, so they're both going, my inlet and outlet, I've got one inlet and one outlet, and they both have the same mass flow rates, which is m.5, but the state, the enthalpy is going to be different. So it's coming in at h4 and it's leaving at h5, and if I divided through <clears throat> by m dot, I could get things in terms of just one minus y. So if you sum up the work that we calculated for the high pressure and the low pressure turbine, you should get the same work, the same work output that you calculated 
if you just drew your control volume around the entire thing. So you can see it's a little bit more complicated if you draw your control volume around each individual thing and calculate it that way. So that's why I suggest just, just draw it around the entire entire turbine and you're you're much less likely to make any mistakes so okay well i hope that was helpful we'll work some problems the next time that we meet